In this video, we are going to talk about translating your content with Strapi and Next.js. As you may remember, we already did an episode about this, but at the time of recording that video, Strapi didn't have options for translating the content. So we had to create additional fields in our content type that would serve as translations for original fields and so on. This is an okay solution if you only have one additional language, but imagine that you want to translate your site or app to five different languages. That would mean that you would have five additional fields for every translatable field. Not an elegant solution by any stretch. But with version 3.6 of Strapi, you get translation options out of the box and to make things even better, Next.js also got internationalized routing in version 10. So in this episode, we are going to take a look at how those two features play together. I'm not going to continue with the site that we made in the previous episodes uh, in this episode, but instead uh, I installed a fresh copy of Strapi so it's version 3.6.3 uh, and uh, also I have a completely vanilla installation of Next.js. So as you can see, I didn't even remove this from here. Uh, this is just a fresh installation of Next.js and fresh installation of Strapi. The next thing that I want to do is I want to turn on internalization for Strapi. So first of all, I'm going to create a con new content type and I'm going to create a new collection type, which I'm going to call pages. And just click continue. Uh, I'm going to add a text component, which is going to be called title and add another field. Uh, this is going to be a rich text component and I'm just going to call it body. Finish. Okay, save this. Now we have pages. Okay, so how do you turn on internalization for Strapi? You go to plugins, and as you can see in the version 3.6, interna internationalization, I can't say that word, uh, comes pre installed with Strapi as a plugin. Uh, if you want to use the site that you were already been building, then you need to update Strapi to version 3.6 and install this plugin. And then I'm just going to go to settings. And as you can see, I have this internationalization uh, option right here. I add the locally. And for me, I'm going to add HR. So that's going to be Croatia and just add that locally. English is our default locally. So our original content is going to be in English and the translated content is going to be in Croatian. The next thing that we need to do is we also need to go to settings and to roles and then to public and then we go to this application right here and we are going to select count, find one and find and save this so that we have access to our content type. Okay, uh, and now let's just create some content. So I'm going to create a new page. And as you can see right here, we don't actually have anything in terms of translate, translating that content. And this is because we need to go to Content Type Builder again, uh, click here on this pencil icon, and then you go to Advanced Settings and turn on Localization. Finish. Now, if I go to pages and want to add a new page, as you can see, the local is, is currently English. So I'm just going to uh, add some title right here. Now, if we want to translate the co this content, we just go to local is, click creation, we get an empty form, and now we can start writing our translation. So I'm going to write it in creation. Okay, so, ovo je stranica koju ćemo prevesti, ovo je tekst koju ćemo prevoditi. Uh, that's what it says right here. So I'm just going to save this. And if we go take a look at the pages once again, as you can see, now we have only one page right here. But if I change the local to creation, then we also have this page, but translated. That's great. So how does this look on our API? And how do we access that data? Of course, you can go to internationalization, uh, documentation page for Strapi and take a look at there. But I'm just going to open up a new tab and go to the pages API endpoint. And as you can see, we are not getting anything. If I click raw, uh, there's nothing here. And this is because if I go to pages, you can see that the page is not actually published. It's currently in draft mode. 
So I'm going to publish this page, go to uh, the Croatian translation and publish that also. And now if I go to pages, as you can see, we get this page. Actually, this would be a list of pages, but since we created only one page, we get this one. And if I go to the ID of one, we get this actual page. As you can see here, uh, we have this localizations array and in it I have an ID of my localization. So if I want to access that localization, I can just go to number two, right? Great. Now the problem with this is, and I couldn't get an answer from the Strapi team about this. What I don't understand is why can't we have something like one and then you do locally equals HR. And if I do that, I will get not found. However, you do have pages and then you do locally HR and then you would get the list of those pages, but translated uh, into Croatian language or whatever language you chose. Or if you have multiple languages, you would, of course, just change uh, this uh, language code right here. So it could be FR or DE or something like that. Unfortunately, as I said, this does not work. And I don't know why that is. We will get just not found. Uh, so we will have to deal with this in the code. And we will do that just a little bit later. As I said at the beginning of this video, Next.js got internationalized routing in version 10.0. What you have to keep in mind here is that this routing is actually meant to be complementary to other i18n library solutions like React Intel, React i18next, which we used in that previous video, Lingui, Rosetta, and so on. So, of course, read the documentation, but to get this feature going in Next.js, you need to set up your Next.js config file. So in our project, as you can see, I'm currently using uh, next version 10.2.3. We are going to create next.config.js file. And in it, we are just going to add module exports. And here we are going to define our options. So first of all, a itin n, and we wanna set up our locales, which are going to be en us and the other one is just going to be hr which is be which would be creation language and of course if you have more languages you would add the codes for them right here uh, default locally is going to be en us just like in our strapi admin we are going to save this and of course whenever you change something in next.config.js file you need to restart that your server so please do that right now Okay, so what I wanna do right here is I wanna create a new file in the pages folder and I'm going to call that file id.jsx. I'm using JSX extension right here because it's going to be easier for your code editor to know what's going on in the file instead of just using JS. So we are going to create that file and in it uh, we are going to create a function which is just going to be called page and it's going to receive some content that we are going to define a little bit later. Uh, and in it, I just want to return container. Uh, the container is just going to set our content in the middle of the page. And now I'm just going to add an H2 tag, which is going to say content title so that we can show our title. And then I'm going to add a div with a class of body. And in it, I'm just going to show our content body. Okay. Of course, we need to export this function. And now we already learned about dynamic links. So this is uh, actually dynamic paths. Uh, this is a dynamic path, which is going to take an ID of a page, contact our server, and then get the content from it. I'm going to do this first just without any localizations whatsoever. So we are first going to define our get server side props and in it from context. So the context is going to contain the ID of a page that we want to access. And we are going to do something like this. So we are getting the ID from context.params. 
Uh, next thing, I'm going to call this initial res because you will see later uh, we are going to have to do some calculations to get the translation of this page. So I'm just going to do const initial. This stands for initial response and we're going to fetch uh, the pages by the ID that we got from our server. Actually, the page, not the pages. Okay, uh, so we want to uh, cast that to JSON. So initial is going to be initial res.json. So we got our initial data. Now let's just return it as props. And we say just props content is going to be initial. And we are, of course, receiving the content right here. OK, save this. Let's check out our page and see if this is working. So if I go to the ID of one, remember, uh, our page is currently at the ID of one. So if we go to slash one, we get this is a page that we are going to translate. This is a text that we are going to translate. And that's it. Now, how do we translate this page? We want to have a button that is going to translate this page. Of course, in the real world situation, you're probably going to use context API and create some kind of a language switcher. But here we are just going to have a button that is going to translate this one page for us. Now, it would be really nice if we have something like this, but we don't and we just get not found right here. So we have to calculate the dot on the server side. And we do that like this. So first of all, you can get the current locally from the context. Okay, so we are going to know what locally the user is currently using. And then I'm going to define a variable called translation. Okay, so this is going to be an undefined variable. And what we are doing right here, we are always getting the default page. So actually the page in the default language. As I said, it would be much better if we could use that URL parameter, but we can't. So we always have to fetch the default language, except if I'm wrong in some way and actually something like this exists and then this whole tutorial is screwed, but I don't think it is because I couldn't find anything in the documentation. So we are getting the default content, which is in English. You always have to get it because if we go to our API and that default content, we are going to get localizations array, which has the ID of the translated content. So now we know on which locally we are with this. So we can say to next. So if is equal HR, then we want to get the creation translation of that page and do that like this. Okay, so I'm going to call this variable translation response. We await fetch for localhost 1337 pages, and then we get this in from initial, we get localizations array uh, and the first object in that array. Now, if you have multiple languages, you will also have to deal with this, right? So you just can't add zero right here, and that's it. Uh, you would have to go with something like find or filter uh, through this object right here and then get the translation that you need depending on the language which your user chose and then after that we are just uh, adding translation response uh, we are just casting translation response to json and adding it to the translation array so this translation is not undefined anymore and uh, we can do something like this here. So we can just say if the translation exists or is not undefined, then we want to show the translation. Otherwise, we want to show initial. And that's it. Save this. OK, so we did this on the server side. Now we have to show this on our page. And to do that, we are going to need to import some things. And those things are link from next linked and use router from next router. OK, so here we are going to first of all have to define our router and it's going to be just use router. And if you console log that, save this, go to our page. Let's just refresh it. It still works great. So here, let me make this bigger. If we go to object, we have as path which is as path. And also we have default locally 
uh, and we have locallys so all of the locallys that you currently have and you also have this locally uh, that shows us on which locally the user is currently at okay so we are using use router for that so here i'm just going to nicely add two br tags and i'm going to create a link and in that link i'm going to define hrf okay hrf so we need to go to the path that we are currently on so to do that we are just going to do router as path and that's it and now for the locally now this is new in next.js 10.0 and when you add uh, that configuration for localization of content then you have this locally parameter that you can add to your links and in here i'm just going to say so if the router locally is equal to en us then we actually want to show the creation version of the page so the local is going to be hr otherwise so if the locally is hr then we want to show the en us version and we are doing this because uh, when somebody clicks on this link it's going to take it to the translation of the current page okay so we add an a tag remove this and also here i'm just going to say something like router locally so if the router locally is enus just like we did for this parameter then we want to check which text do we want to show so if you are on english page we actually want to show the croatian text so when somebody comes to that page that knows croatian uh, they are going to be able to read this text so we are going to say prikaži hrvatski prijevod and if you're on english translation then we want to say show english translation uh, this is kind of a way that you would create a language switcher for your site of course you would probably be using something like context api and so on to get the global language that is currently used on the page save this and let's just check it if this works so if i go right here as you can see i get prikaži hrvatski prijevod i'm just going to refresh the page okay so prikaži hrvatski prijevod if i click it then i get croatian text ovo je stranica koju ćemo prevesti ovo je tekst koju ćemo provoditi and i have this show english translation so if i click this the page changes and also note that here we are changing the url so by using this locally right here the router is going to take us to a sub path which is going to be hr slash one it's not going to be uh, just one or two or whatever and if we go to english translation then we are going to go to just slash one and that's about it just remember that on the next js side if you are using this new feature uh, you would probably need to pair it with something like this right react intel react i18 next link boy on so and so on because right now this is only going to do the localized routing but you won't have stuff like i don't know string translations or something like that so you, you would always at least if you are not doing something very very simple like we are doing right here you would only always need to couple this with some other library because next.js is not going to provide you with everything out of the box so anyway guys this has been it for this video everything we did here will be available free on github the link will be in the description below and as always thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one